Undertaking due diligence is a must when considering investing or trading in any security. Different sectors have different methods of analysis. Today we're looking at the mining sector, where opportunities can range from the highly speculative, where someone's asking for investments to survey a geological anomaly, to high-cost projects that may end up being uneconomic. With more now, we're joined by Simon Popple from Brookville Capital. Simon, welcome back. Hello. Um, I want to go first of all with the broad question. How do you go about this? Because it is fraught with all sorts of potential difficulties, this area. No, absolutely. I mean, I think it's useful to have a sort of a system and a framework that you always sort of uh, delve into when you look at anything. Um, I use uh, something called the bridge system, which is really uh, a set of criteria that um, if you look at them all, it, it sort of helps you with your analysis and you want to sort of make sure that they're all ticked off before you look at other things as well. OK, well, we've got them listed here, uh, Bridge, um, with that acronym there. Let's take them in order, because I think it's the obvious thing to do. Yeah. Uh, balance sheet, first of all. Um, talk to us a little bit about that. What should we be watching out for, particularly in that area? Well, it depends if they're a producer, so they're producing cash, or an explorer, so they're, they're sort of uh, spending cash. So if, if they're an explorer, a, a big red flag would be sort of debt on the balance sheet or a, a significant a contingent liability that would make it difficult to raise further money for further exploration. Uh, if they're a producer, then um, the debt on the balance sheet uh, can be fine, but then you want to look at when it's due to be redeemed. And also you want to look at the margin between what their all-in sustainable cost is and the, the prevailing gold price to make sure you've got a decent margin so there's decent cash flow that they can service the debt. You mentioned gold price. Um, from your particular angle, obviously, precious metals is your thing, but presumably this could be spread out across the mining sector, could it not? No, absolutely. I mean, I, in, this could be used for, for, for any mining uh, Base metals, project. precious metals. Exactly. Yeah. You, know, you, you still want to make sure you've got margin and you've got cash flow cover to service yeah. any debt. OK. Um, the second letter of bridges are the resource um, you've got there. Um, as you said at the top, uh, sometimes you don't have a resource. You're yeah. exploring. You're looking at this geological anomaly, potentially, yeah. to establish a resource or get... Um, but how important, then, is the resource and what degrees of resource should we be looking for when doing our analysis? Well, the, the area you're looking at is incredibly important. And, I mean, ideally you want the... Geographical area or are you talking about well, geological yes, law? Well, geographical and geological. You know, they're both sort of hanging together. But, I mean, I think that... Uh, in an ideal world, you want an existing resource. Um, it's very well someone pointing at the ground and saying, there's gold down there. But you want some sort of proof that at least they found something um, before you, you, know, you start investing hard-earned money into a stock. So I think it, it, you want to see something. It, it could be an inferred, which is at the most speculative end of, uh, of a resource calculation. But it's nice to see something. And then... Obviously, as the, as the company evolves, um, then that inferred could become uh, an indicator, then measured, and then ultimately a reserve. But um, the, the point being, you know, if, if, if you're investing in something, it's nice to, to know that you know, there's a good chance of something working. And, of course, along the line as well on there, you've got the point at which you establish whether or not it's economic to get it out of the ground because it may be so sparsely, um, uh, you know, it's difficult to get out of the ground in any one lump. So it's going to cost more than the price of the metal in the first place? No, absolutely. I mean, this is a mistake a lot of investors make, actually, because they, they see a, a headline resource figure of a million ounces or something, and yeah. they think, oh, this is fantastic. Yeah. But then when they actually sort of do further due diligence, they realise that that is actually perhaps across 10 deposits that aren't near each other. So none of them are really economic. So what on the face of it could look like an attractive project, yeah. um, you're really kind of you want to look at the deposits as well as the resource. Yeah, all about digging down. Forget Absolutely. The yeah. <laughs> In infrastructure, the eye. Yeah, well, I mean, that's really about uh, the roads and, uh, and rail and power and water. If you're going to have a mine, they need all of these things. Well, perhaps not rail and roads, but, I mean, they need a form of transportation. So um, if there's an existing infrastructure close to where uh, the company is, is exploring, then that could obviously, you know, there's potential for that to be used. But uh, there are certain situations, particularly in places like Australia, where 
they're looking in the middle of nowhere. There's no roads, there's no water, there's no power. And so even if they do find a stonking deposit, you do need to bear in mind that they'll, they'll have to put an infrastructure in place, which, you know, which isn't cheap. So it's worth considering that before you um, dive in. Mm. OK. Uh, diversity. Diversity, well, that's an interesting one because, I mean, y you need to diversify. Uh, it depends on your appetite for risk. But I would say that uh, you want to invest in quite a few different companies because you know, some may not work out, others could do very, very well. Um, and I think you know, recent events with, with funds being gated uh, would suggest that you, know, you also need to be careful about where you're allocating your capital because if you, if, even if you put it into a mining fund that invests in lots of different mines, if that fund is gated, you can't get your money out. So I, I think there's diversity is, is something you need to look at on a very broad, excuse the pun again, range, and, uh, and make sure that uh, you, you will have access to a, a large proportion of your money uh, should, uh, should the world hit you know, interesting times. Yeah. Um, if we go back to the list, um, we go on to grade. Now, w I touched on this when we were talking about the resource, but grade is so important, isn't it? I mean, this is the whole thing. Yeah. You get great nuggets of gold around, it's all great. But of course, sometimes you hear about these mines these days. We're now down to the tiny, tiny bits of gold that you're finding in the ground. And yeah. the grade is so poor that, again, it goes back to this uh, potentially uneconomic situation. No, that's absolutely right. I mean, I, I think grade is something um, y you need to sort of know what you're looking for because if it's an open pit, you could, you could have a lower grade because it's cheaper to extract. Um, but then you also need to sort of consider what the ore is because uh, if it's an underground mine and the ore is particularly uh, sort of lends itself well to the processing of gold, then you could probably get away with a lower grade. But there's, there's some ore which, which is very difficult to extract the, the gold from. And so that kind of ore, you need a particularly high grade. So you do need to, um, to have a good look at the grade and, and really sort of think um, sort of how economic is it. Um, and even if it's a high number, um, quite often the market is right and you may expect the share price to be much higher than it is, mm. but there's, there's, there's always a reason behind yeah. it. Uh, going back to the word, uh, we've got to go to the last one, which is the E, which is the exploration potential. But in some respects, this is actually one of the first things you look at, isn't it, when a mine establishes itself or begins to establish itself? Is this potential for exploration? No, absolutely true. I mean, I, I think this goes hand in hand, not just with explorers, but also producers, because a producer will typically have a mine life that it could be 5, 10, 15 years, whatever it is. But to, to benefit from any major upswing in the gold price where the shares you know, could do very, very well, um, ideally you also want there to be exploration potential because you want, um, even though you want some of the money with the producer to come back to the shareholders, you do want them to, to replace gold that they've extracted with, with new gold. And to do that, you need to explore. Um, so. Uh, when you're talking about exploration potential, you talk about it in various different ways. There's a lateral um, potential, so north, south, east, west. Um, from an existing deposit. From an existing deposit, exactly. But there's also a depth. And quite often you hear the term open. Um, now, if it's open in all directions, that means it's open in all of those directions. But um, quite often you may just hear that it's open at depth or open to the east or open to the west, which would imply that they've, they've drilled down and found nothing. But um, they're still finding gold in one direction or the other. And of course the other thing is I think important to talk about here is going back to the early stage of any potential mine, is this potential for exploration in areas politically where it may not be acceptable, it may not be possible because of large numbers of people and the way in which they're taking potentially going to take the stuff out of the ground. No, that's absolutely right. I mean I, I think that there's, this is the sort of the core uh, system for looking at things, but there's a lot of things, as you say, you know, there's political things, there's environmental things, and a, a whole host of other things that you should consider. But uh, if it fails the bridge test, mm. then you should probably look no further. Okay, all right, that's great. The bridge test, thanks indeed for joining us. Simon Popple there from Brookfield Capital with his way of looking at potential investments in the mining sector using the bridge system.